Let's be honest, that sounds really bad. But from a quarterback's perspective, Matt, is it as bad as it sounds? Well, Sam, like football is the ultimate team sport. And every interception has its own story. And the, the Dallas Cowboys have been good with play action, but not so much in the drop back game, especially Dak Prescott. Let's go down to the film room. Let's go. Right, Let's let me go. show you what I'm talking Let's about. Go. Okay? You have to trust. I think the guys around him have to step up and pick him up. And then Dak has to trust his teammates, in particular his protection and regular drop back passing. Yeah, Dak's got to do a lot better. But Sam, this defense has to improve too because there's problems that they have at, earlier in the year that they're having right now in terms of now to the present since yeah. it is Christmas, isn't it? Yes, they have to <laughs> fix these problems going forward. I mean, it's not that they don't have the talent. We know this defense can play well, but in the last three weeks, they've given up the second most touchdowns in the league. We'll see if they can get it together today against the Eagles was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1990. He won four Super Bowls with the Steelers, including being named Super Bowl IX MVP. Despite his undeniable success and notoriety, Harris was known for being a gentle giant of sorts, relatively quiet but fiercely devoted to his loved ones and his city. In a career and life full of memorable moments, there is one that stands above the rest. Our Sam Borden takes us back down the field this year it's almost like throwing darts down in the red zone and picking mm. teams apart and the different people help their offense so much down there what do you think swag i just love the fact that joe burrow is playing this year oh that kind of you kind of just gave it away a little bit oh. all right so uh maybe one of our favorite segments honestly it's just dan's favorite segment but we keep doing it by the, the way dan you're Wagon. the person who thought of the segment i did not i don't think i was i think it was mark eisman our producer but anyway so, Garrett Wilson was on the damn wagon last week. Yeah. Who's going to join him this week? Who do you think's the biggest Pro Bowl snub? Well, has totally made them legit Super Bowl contenders along with that defense, but he's on a damn wagon. Congratulations, Christian. Probably not the greatest accomplishment of your no, life. No, it is. And or award, but you're welcome. I mean, honestly, Christian, it's all downhill from here. I don't even care if you end up in the Super Bowl. If you win it, you have been on the damn wagon. That's a compliment to the damn you're wagon. Right, you're right, like, you're, you're right, up you're at right. the well top done. now, well done. okay? Well done. Mad at me for a compliment. All right, let's get to some. And Liz Lozen now joining us for a special holiday edition of Fantasy Football. Liz, thank you so much. It is playoff time. People, of course, looking for those last-minute gifts. Let's give them some, Liz. Okay, let's start with the stocking stuffers. Um, who are you starting this week? <laughs> I know. They're banged up a little bit. It's going to be a great Monday Night Football game. We're going to call this the Grinch list. Which players should sit, Liz? Okay. Liz, we both know we're on the nice list, right? Yes. Let's give some nice advice this oh, weekend to some owners. I love what you did yes. there. <laughs> Especially. All right. So the wind and the cold. Goes out. Happy holidays to everyone and your gift coming courtesy of Liz Loza. Thank you so much, Liz. We appreciate you. Hit in the number yesterday. Marcus said this yesterday. When his Cowboys, his Cowboys face the Eagles, he wants Jalen Hurts to be out in that field, right? Because that is when you know what you got as a defense and also as a team. But either way, this is obviously a huge test for the Dallas Cowboys, a team that has improved in Mike McCarthy's third season. However, they still need some work, right? And it feels like the trust factor is still an issue with the Dallas Cowboys. Obviously, a ton of pressure on the Dallas Cowboys. Also, though, how about those 13 and one Philadelphia Eagles with that kind of record? Big time pressure on them as well. So the question is, who needs to get to the Super Bowl more? Here's what First Take had to say about that. To this extent, right? That's why Kendrick Perkins is joining us live on SportsCenter. So we all know they tried to land Donovan Mitchell this offseason. They failed with that, but they did get Jalen Brunson. And as we just saw, he's been really good a late with, of late, 21 points last night. What have you seen overall, Perk? from the Knicks during this winning streak that, that gives Knicks fans hope? One that's not happening right now. Absolutely, and, and what an improvement, really, because last year that was good for a stretch at the beginning, and then they fell off. This does feel different, and I think you mm. used the key word there, trust, and it comes from the top yes. with Tibbs there. They're going for nine in a row tonight. It'll be against the Toronto Raptors if they get it done. Kendrick Perkins, thank you for joining us. As we've been reporting today, Hall of Fame running back Franco Harris has died at the age of 72. No cause of death has been announced. Harris, a four-time Super Bowl champion with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And, and when he retired in 1984, after 13 seasons in the league, first 12 with Pittsburgh, he was third all-time in rushing yards behind only Walter Payton and Jim Brown. That's true greatness. Jeremy Sheff has more in today's edition of Outside the Lines. Holy moly is right, and we start Sports Center tonight right there, observing the Hall of Fame career of Steelers legend Franco Harris, who died overnight at age 72. The immaculate reception, which happened almost 50 years ago to the day, 
Maybe his most famous play, memorialized forever in statue form at Pittsburgh's airport, but Franco Harris' impact in Pittsburgh and the NFL was immeasurable. A key cog in the dynastic Steelers of the 70s, a true ambassador for the sport post-retirement, and his resume undeniable. Much more reflecting on the life and legacy of Franco Harris ahead, but we switched to baseball, and with Steve Cohen handing out $100 million contracts like their Tic Tacs, it's hard to believe there was a time when the Yankees were the bankroll kings of baseball. George Steinbrenner's willingness to spend buku bucks on his payroll helped create the distinction between big and small market teams. And while the Mets are grabbing all the headlines right now for their current spending spree, the Yankees making it official on their own splashy offseason move and Michelle Steele has more in tonight's Sports in a Report. So the Lions were 1-6, and six, by the way, to start the season. So a tip of the cat to Dan Campbell on how he has them playing. The idea that we're talking playoff scenarios is a testament to their turnaround. There is a true path for them at 7-7. Seven and seven. Right now, they're the 9 seed. The Commanders occupy that space. They would have a first-round matchup with the Vikings in the postseason. So they're going to be the ones to really factor in this. Because even if we say Detroit beats Carolina this week, a very real possibility, that remains unmoved. It's going to take the Commanders losing one of their last three games to shift this at all. So let's give San Francisco the win this weekend. Look what instantly happens. The Lions slide right into there. And it's a very real possibility they keep that momentum as they face Carolina, host the Bears, and are at Green Bay for their final three games. A real shot at their first postseason trip since 2016. How bad they were. We've got to center around the conversation when they have definitely turned it around as we bring in our NBA champion, Kay Perk. Listen. We know that the numbers are there, and certainly it's a better situation than it was at the beginning of the year, but what's your take on whether they're a legitimate title threat? Or not, they have at least steadied the ship, right? Again, as they face a Warriors team that's lost, yeah. that lost to the Knicks last night by 38 points. A 10-game losing streak for Washington. You're talking about mm. a Suns team that had another ugly finish. They keep losing games. What do you make of that exchange between Monty and Ayton? Man, go be great. Yeah, listen, some people pay really good money for aged beef. We'll certainly see if someone is willing to pay good money for <laughs> Aiden's beef. As you mentioned, he can't be mm -hmm. traded until January 15th at the earliest. Mm. Perk joining us to run down the... Yes, the 50th anniversary of that mm -hmm. immaculate, not to mention iconic reception, is this coming Friday. And the NFL yeah. was well aware of that and made sure to schedule the Raiders and the Steelers right around the golden anniversary of the game itself, Nicole. Pittsburgh players to boot were going to wear 1970s throwback jerseys and they were going to retire Franco Harris's number 32. It was pretty oh, perfect yeah. until what happened today. Franco was supposed to be there. Instead, Sunday is going to be about that play, but also about the man who made it happen because Franco Harris died today. He was 72. So then there's the other New York team with the operating budget of like a really small country. <laughs> Fighting Steve Cohen's they it's the land where the rich get richer and the roster is essentially that of an all-star game Carlos Correa to the Mets because the Giants while they can't disclose medical information can say there's a difference of opinion over the results of his physical examination So is there something or is is flopping skills are they on par with I don't know pick one take one because maybe <laughs> just maybe Correa heard Boris, his agent, would get the Mets on the line. We have so many questions. Jeff Passan does have answers. His Good afternoon, at least here on the East Coast. Mm. Welcome to a live sports center. Jay Harrison, Sage Steele here with you for the next two hours. How about the Jacksonville Jaguars delivering in the rain at the yep. Meadowlands on Thursday night and may have put themselves in the driver's seat in that AFC South division. The Jets, meanwhile, heading to the back of the playoff hunt line. Is it the end for Zach Wilson in New York? And what the Jets coach is saying, about what the team needs to do now on Sports Center. Let's go. Nine weeks since the first Eagles Cowboys matchup, and since then, a lot has changed. First and foremost, Dak Prescott. Dallas' loss to Philly in week seven was actually the only game they lost during his five week absence, and then they went on a roll again, winning six of seven until last weekend's debacle against the Jaguars. On the Philly side, Jalen Hurts actually had a very average game in that win over Dallas, throwing for just 155 yards. That was fewer than Cooper Rush in that game. However, he is still Jalen Hurts, and the fact that the Eagles won't have him tomorrow at AT&T Stadium definitely hurts. We've got reports from both teams. Let's start in Dallas with Todd Archer. The 2019 MVP, he's good as we bring in our insider Jeremy Fowler. When, come on, give, give us your crystal ball. When can we expect to see Lamar Jackson back out there? Well, they're hopeful for next week, but they just need to get him to practice. He hasn't practiced yeah. nine straight days. I talked to somebody close to Jackson who said that the hope is that he plays is it's a huge. little concerning. I think the Ravens are just saying, hey, let's give him the full three weeks. It was considered a one to three week injury. Okay. 
let's get through that now. But I, I've talked to some people that were a little bit surprised that he didn't at least hit the practice field this week. Okay, we'll see what happens in Charm City. In the meantime, other teams are really hoping for good news regarding injuries to some of their players uh, as they make a playoff push. Let's start with the Commanders. They have a really big game in San Francisco, right? It's been more than 13 months yes. since they've seen defenseman Chase Young out there with the knee. He had the surgery. Yeah. It's been a really tough recovery for him. What's the update there? Yeah, so he turned a corner this week. I'm told he had... Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. Have a good holiday. You too. Sage, the nature... Ready for that. By the way, over the last few years, we all know the teams that have dominated basketball headlines, Golden State, Milwaukee, Boston, Phoenix, and deservedly so because they've all made it to or actually won the NBA Finals. And then there's a team like the Lakers who are just the Lakers, so we're going to have to always keep them in the conversation. But you know which team absolutely deserves to be in this convo? John Morant and the Memphis Grizzlies. They pushed the Warriors hard in last year's Western Conference semis, and now everybody knows how talented this team is, including the NBA schedule makers who have placed the Grizz front and center on Christmas Day. Starts with Patron. Still to come on a fresh hour first take. See, we're in the holiday spirit. Oh, holy night. The stars are shining bright. Well